Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Napoleon Total War 3 battle and we're here in the period of the Napoleonics with fancy uniforms and glorious line battles and there you go, you can see the lines marching forward, we have the French here in their 1809 to 1812 Grand Army sort of style marching forward in column is very classic of the French and look at all these beautiful lines of infantry, it looks glorious. So yeah, this is the 1809, 1812's uh, French faction. They have obviously various different ones depending on the period of history. We also have the Bavarians, or they're called Bayern in this, but they're Bavaria basically, holding the village of Elo, e I think it's called, or something like that, Elo. Um, it's in Germany. It's basically there's a famous battle in history, but not with these, not with these armies. Uh, it's uh, the French versus the Russians in history, but it's not today. It's going to be the French and their German allies, we have uh, the Confederation of the Rhine and, uh, as already mentioned, Bavaria facing off against the UK, Sweden and Prussia who are yet to reveal themselves. You can see the UK starting to appear and he's starting to uh, march down the road here into the city or the town. It was very glorious actually, look at that. The Redcoats are coming, the Redcoats are coming. But uh, yes, I mean, this should be a very stern defense. I mean, they've got a lot of buildings here. They're holding this one here with 129 men. Uh, currently, I presume this is a line infantry unit. Oh no, grenadiers in here. Okay, grenadiers in there. Got line infantry, got cavalry everywhere dotted around. This is a very heavily fortified uh, region. There they go. The Prussians are starting to appear. It doesn't look like anyone's going to really oppose the Prussians. Um, both the Confederation of the Rhine and France are really sending their infantry divisions towards the village over here and it's going to be the cavalry that's going to duke it out over here. Whereas the Prussians will do the same. You can see over here the Confederation of the Rhine has some Ullans very far out, very uh, well yeah very far out. There's not much else to say about that. But if you've been enjoying the content at the moment on the channel and you'd like to see more th Napoleon Total War uh, 3 then please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here and a comment. And here we go the first infantry engagements. We have the line infantry of Bavaria opening fire onto the British and have any men dropped really for the British over there? They killed a mere one man and they've got two units here firing on the one for Britain so I mean you think oh. so you'd think that they're uh, you'd expect that they're gonna win first like the two units against the one Basically, is probably what's going to happen. I do imagine that's going to be the case. I mean, this is the Peninsula British, though. So, I mean, these are elites from the Peninsula War. So, I expect them to do well. North Lincolnshire, Foot of the Yellow Bellies. Oh, that's a cool name. I mean, I can actually understand all the names here. And I actually know some of these. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't know that the, day, uh, the 10th was North Lincolnshire. I mean, I lived in Lincoln for a bit. So, uh, I do know about that. that blind Half Hundred. That's cool. I've seen the, 90, uh, the 95th Rifles have been in about. Yeah, there they are. The unit that Sean Bean Sharp is part uh, playing is like Richard Sharp is part of. Definitely check out that series if you haven't, uh, if you don't know about it. And they're uh, opening fire. It looks like on some light, uh, some line infantry over here, getting some shots off. A uh, general's under attack. We have Carl Philip von Reed here. He's under attack. Look at this. The French really are gonna. Are they gonna defend this tree line? I wonder. But I mean, the Confederation of the Rhine's kind of cowering at the back over there. It needs to be. Uh, Moving forward, really, some uh, artillery shots over here look like they've been opening fire on some uh, cavalry, taking out some cuirassiers, some really elite cuirassiers as well, Brandenburg cuirassiers, and we've got some uh, Ullens here, and then we've got some uh, Lifes, Lifesars, I'm pretty sure these are, these are pretty elite from Sweden, it's still to see Sweden's army and Prussians are starting to appear here, the Prussians are coming, as always the Prussians are coming. But I mean, it looks like the British are going to continue their assault into the village. I don't know why there's so many men in column. They should really spread out, try and flank around this position. Because Bavaria is quite comfortable with this. I mean, they need to be careful, obviously, of these uh, Chevaliers out here on the flank as well. But, I mean, yeah, the British are losing this ever so slightly, I'd say. I mean, I don't know. There's some pretty beat-up units here in comparison. The Grenadiers here are just doing quite... I'm surprised they're not firing it out onto the street. But the smoke in this is glorious. You can barely see it like it would truly be. That's why I have all the bright, like, uniforms so you can see what you're shooting at. And just making sure you're not shooting at your own side. The British here doing their best. 
volley, man! Look, I mean, imagine firing from like four ranks back. I'm not sure that was a. Uh, you'd really be doing that, but they are, it would seem. They're really focusing down this one on the left, or like the Bavaria's left, uh, our right currently. The one on this side is kind of a little bit better off. But here you go. Looks like the British are going to go in. They're sending in the Coldstream Guards already. Sending in some of their elite troops to come and deal with these Grenadiers. Coldstream Guards obviously defend, usually defending the Palace of, uh, well, of Buckingham. Buckingham Palace. And uh, here they are. Now fighting in uh, somewhere in Germany. Against Germans. The Bavarians. I mean, we can't really see what's going on in there. But I presume uh, a lot of death. And I'm going to say... Uh, well, I'm going to say that the Coldstreams are winning that, uh, because I presume the red is the British, in that sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know, actually. I mean, they're losing a lot of men, actually, the Coldstreams. They lost a lot getting shot going into the building. Yeah, it looks like the French are going to hold the right flank. Looks like the Confederation Rhine might be going to support Bavaria. Or is it just going to be a reserve and just going to kind of send troops where they're needed? Or is he going to... What would be a really good play is if you can get around this far left and strike the British right because I mean Britain's got a lot of stuff just in this little like corridor here already really it looks like he's falling back as Bavaria he's gonna fall back ah this is a nice idea I mean he th I think he knows he's going to lose this building so he needs to like move these units but I mean this one here I mean could be caught out I mean they're gonna get shot now by the uh, the skins the inner skillings uh, an Irish unit coming up, the 27th. I mean, they're kind of behind the building at the moment, but you do imagine once they go further past, they're going to get shot. But yeah, I mean, the North Lincoln shirt, the 10th is one here. I mean, they're getting shot now by men that are still supposedly fighting inside the city, inside this town. I'm not really sure who's winning that. Oh, it's close. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the cold streams are going to win that fight. Because, I mean, the Grenadiers have got them down to, like, so they're, oh, here we go, a nice little flanking fight. They're getting shot on the flank here. And, yeah, the North Lincolnshire has broken, or is going to break due to this. After fighting so well in that little uh, street fight, they're now probably going to break. They're going to get shifted to the right, by the looks of it. And uh, West Kent's now going to take on the uh, the forefront of this assault. Uh, but there you go, Sweden has appeared. So we can see his massed army appearing here. Lots of... Uh, well, I don't do Swedish, um, so I'm going to say that these are, well, these look like militia. Then you've got, like, the line infantry behind, I think. I'm not sure. Like, their uniforms just look so bizarre. Yeah, I'm going to say these are infantry. And then they might have, are these possibly the, uh, like, line, well, obviously they're infantry. Are they line infantry? They might be. And then these look more like, maybe more like militia? Maybe all the guards. It could be one or the other, to be honest. But they've got their line infantry anyway set up. They're in the long line. All ready to go in. And uh, they've got cavalry... Oh, uh, not cavalry. Artillery setting up over here by the Prussians as well to support them. Got a couple of six-pounders ready. What are they duking out against? Mm, I can't see any guns yet for the French set up. Oh, there they are. They're right at the back. They're 12-pounders. Okay. Two sets of 12-pounders. I think they're firing as well. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look, see whether they're uh, opening fire just yet. I mean, this is a huge gun emplacement. They are opening fire. This is the artillery uh, uh, Apid. This is like, I don't know, a very elite artillery unit, I'm going to presume. Five guns. Jeez, it's going to outgun anything right now. And then you've got another two there. And yeah, I mean, look at that. They've just broken the six pounder. I think I'm just focusing it down. Wow. And they've taken out, they've taken out nine of the guns, but they take out a lot of the uh, gunners and the horses. And they're retreating. I don't know whether they'll return. That's a huge loss. And the general is dead. Who's lost their general? A friend. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see this. So the uh, Confederation of the Rhine. You see those cavalry that came around ages ago. I mentioned them. They've got to Arthur Wesley, I think. And they've taken Arthur Wesley out. Yeah, I think. I think the Duke of Wellington or future Duke of Wellington is dead. He's down here dead somewhere anyway. I think that was what they were going for. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's very much broken and winded and gone. And there you go. I think the uh, building has been lost. The farmhouse has been lost. The British did eventually take this. The Coltroom Guard lost basically their entire unit. Jeez. And now the like the bloody fighting in this street continues. Look how close they're getting. This is going to be point blank range from the four uh, from the sixth Warwickshire. 
And the West Kents are still in here. How are they still holding? They're just getting like obliterated. But now, I mean, with the farmhouse taken, they need to like throw more troops here to the British and support this. I mean, what are they sending now? They're sending the Coldstream Guards still in here. They've got the yes, in skillings and areas as well to hold this building down. They're going to just open fire onto these uh, Bavarian units. I mean, they're getting flanked as well here by uh, the. Well, Thomas Picton. This is a Picton unit. Okay, the Northumberland uh, foot. And the Prussians are pushing hard now on this far flank. They've got... I mean, the Prussians and the Swedes need to get into this fight soon. Because uh, Britain's really going in alone. And there you go. Bavaria's losing some troops now. I mean, they're pushing hard. And the French and the uh, Confederation of the Rhine are just kind of falling back. And they're just going to allow... The uh, Prussians come deeper and deeper, I think, before they're going to strike these units. Because, I mean, they're very isolated. They're starting to get themselves isolated. Look at, like, how deep they are. They can't go much further away than these cavalry. I know they're trying to defend the guns, but they don't want to leave their uh, line infantry undefended as well. And I think they're going to reposition some of this line infantry just to kind of have a look at these cavalry. Which is kind of surprising. And here we go. You can see the mass of uh, Prussians starting to appear out of the gloom as well. Got all of their... Uh, the musketeers here, holding the line, and it look glorious, all in the black. Blucher will be somewhere, telling his men f to go forwards. I'm pretty sure he was called, like, Marshal uh, Vorkrans or whatever, it's like, forwards, in, uh, in like, German. But here you go, the Confederation Rhine has done what I thought he'd do, and he's coming around the left-hand side, and he's going to force the British back. And the British had seen it coming and have left this, like, area here, this square, almost. And, uh, yeah, the British are in for a bit of a, a rough ride here. They're getting double teamed at the moment. I mean, they seem to have done a bit of damage to Bavaria. They've routed at least two units I've seen. I'm surprised. Who's running now? Oh, it's the uh, Hussars. Are they running? Yeah, the Hussars are running. Wow. I think they're because they're getting shot from this farmhouse. So anything here is just... They need to retake this farmhouse, basically. And I think that's about to be what's happening. Grenadiers are being sent forward. These Nassau's are being sent forward. Possibly. I don't know. Confederation of the Rhine sending some Nassau's herd. That'll be good to see. And uh, got some troops from Hessen as well possibly going forward. But it looks like uh, Confederation of the Rhine's almost going to take over this bit of the city of uh, Elau. And it's going to be uh, the Bavarians now on the right. Still facing off against many of the British and now the Swedes with their French allies. And here we go. A nice volley there from the Northumberland forces. Just look at them, and the officer ready. I mean, sometimes occasionally firing his pistol, it's awesome. There he goes, firing his pistol. Oh, I bet he got a kill. I mean, they're firing, like, heavily into this Bavarian unit, but I mean, they're taking losses just as badly. And the men keep fatiguing, it seems. But there you go, the Nassau's have been sent in. And they are going to go into combat, and it's pretty even in there. What did they leave in? They took out uh, the in skillings, it seems, and the uh, cold streams are all that's left in there. I would be surprised what are they going to hold, and it looks like the uh, British have already, like, defied gravity and are, like, hanging outside the door. Uh, outside the window, in fact. And there you go, they've taken, retaken this farmhouse. I have a feeling this farmhouse is going to get taken and retaken by each side several times over. And here come the Swedes. The Swedes are setting up some line infantry now, and they're getting volleys from the Bavarians. They're getting the first volume. They actually got quite a lot of damage to those units there. You can see them off in the distance. And I can see a gun from the British, a King's German Legion 6 pounder getting ready. And we've got more men running. Not quite sure where that is. But it looks like uh, the British cavalry is. Uh, now sort of holding this flank. I mean, this, these are huge units. 118, 150. Well, that's actually not so big. But, I mean, they're routing off the Chasseurs of Cheval over there. And they've got Swedish cavalry here in the rear. I would send that round. Try and go and threaten a bit more. But there you go. Oh, I thought that was... Uh, sorry, I do apologize. I thought the Prussians were pushing forward. But that's only the uh, Confederation of the Rhine. It looks like the Prussians... No, they haven't lost any... I mean, they lost a few troops. But they didn't lose anything major. And look at these two huge... This is a huge unit, 128. I mean, they need to uh, really use their advantage with the cavalry here. Possibly want to try and send forces forward. Maybe want to try and capture this village. I know this doesn't do anything for you. And then push around the right, perhaps. Force the Prussians. Because the Prussians, look at this, is so narrow. They're still in their column formation, not spreading out. 
Jeez, what happened there? Is that did they lose like oh I thought they were all dead, but most of them are getting up there. It was a direct hit here though, but yeah, most of these uh musketeers are getting up, but this is the problem. If you keep firing on this, this is gonna do a lot of damage to morale and to units. Just getting fired at constantly, and the Prussians need to make a decision. Since I think the Swedes are probably gonna be fighting most of Bavaria. I think the and possibly a bit of the French. If the Swedes can do an absolute job and pin down the French army. The Prussians can do a flanking force and, like, march round and get the French on the flank. Because that's going to be what they're going to need to do, because the Confederation of the Rhine, you can already see here, has forced back the British out of the village very effectively. And has uh, taken this from Z for his own, really. And he's done a great job here. I mean, I'm loving the, like, Confeder Confederation of the Rhine. It was what was made after the Holy Roman Empire broke away, if you didn't know. So it's basically loads and loads of different... Well, states basically all merged together. So I think we've got like Baden here. We've got Hessen and Darmstadt, Wurtberg. Uh, we've got as uh, Sachsen. I'm definitely butchering some of these names, but I mean they're great. And then we've got Nassau somewhere. We've already seen them. I love Nassau. I think they were one of my favourite factions. Oh, like factions, I guess you call them, but they're like nations in a way. Really, still aren't they? Uh, they're not really their own separate faction. You could probably play as all Nassau. If you wanted to, it'd be a bit hard, I'm sure, but you could do it. I think they only brought the couple of Nassau's, and they're all Grenadiers. Yeah, look at this, the Swedes being forced back as well. They're not liking it. They've lost the, nearly half that unit, and these ones are looking a bit beaten as well. Yeah, I mean, the Jaegers here are really doing a lot of damage from a Bavaria, doing a really good job. And you can see here, hiding behind this little wall. Oh my gosh, is that an artillery piece that's going off? Did that... Was that a direct hit or something from... I'm going to presume from the Swedish artillery. Look how close they are. They are point blank range. Is this artillery piece? Jeez, they are. I think they are getting focused down and they're trying to. Fo oh, they shot the cavalry behind them. They shot that. That cavalry just got absolutely obliterated. I saw that, like, just. These guys, like, evaporating the whole, like, form through. And yeah, these hussars are going to need to move. They, I'd Like I said, I think they should go to the far flank with the British and they can then. Do some damage to the confederation of the Rhine's flank. It looks like the Prussians are finally going to push forward as well. The Swedes are going forward, but only in small numbers. They need to really uh, go forward as a large force. They keep setting up like units of ones and twos, and they're just going to get outgunned. You can see over there, like, look at the Bavarian gun, just getting ready. That's just on such a nice little ledge. Have a volley! That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, the Swedes might want to push forward, try and take that gun. I mean, it's so heavily defended, though. Look at all the line infantry waiting for them. That is insane. I mean, it is getting this... They're luckily, like, they're missing and hitting this church behind, which is not good if you're a, a holy man, because they are absolutely butchering that, that church. But, I mean... At least the Bavarians seem to, like, have dug down really well, and they are in this city. It's going to be hard to get them out. This is kind of like the battle of like history. Oh my gosh, okay. I did not see this. The British have charged down the uh, Confederation of the Line. And they are forming square. They're forming square. Some of the line infantry is forming square and trying to stop these uh, Royal Irish Dragoo Dragoons. And, uh, but they've routed two units. And this is what I was saying that the Swedes seem to get involved and do. They need to carry on this flank and they can do a lot of damage. And they're firing off volleys now. Hold the square! Hold the square. And there you go. They're going to go after this unit now, I think, because this one's setting up. They thought, oh, we, we're going to be free of being attacked. But no, this poor Grenadier unit here is going to get attacked. This is a good unit as well to go after if you're the British player. Because Grenadier is obviously very useful. And yeah, there you go. Look at that. Just destroyed. I mean, the friend, I mean the uh, British might lose the cavalry unit as well. I don't know. No, it keeps r rallying itself. Oh, no, there it goes. It might be going now. Jeez, that charge is not as good as it hoped to be. But it was enough, it was enough. The Grenadiers are gone. Now this British cavalry can go on, but it's really depleted. It's lost like two-thirds of its men almost. And look at this, it's a general route. That unit that formed square now getting gunned down by the British. That was really well done by the Peninsula Army there. For making them, forcing them to form square and then shooting them when they form square. Because you're going to get more volleys off against the square formation. And look at that, the Confederation right now, routing. Four of his units here routing, and he had a considerable line here. The rest of his army is now turning, trying to force this British flank. If I was a Swedish now, I'd be pushing forward onto the Confederation of the Rhine's flank. And it looks like the French are finally going to rumble out, but they need to 
Like, they might need to start helping their allies a little bit more. They're having a hard time. But, I mean, they're still waiting. I mean, look at this cavalry force that's forming up over here. And the Prussians and the Swedes have still got to, like, just be defensive with it. With their forces. And, I mean, the Prussians are starting to get up and set up. Whether there'll be enough. I mean, these are the 18, 13, 15 units. I mean, they should have the beating of these... Uh, 1809, 1812. Actually, I don't know, because this is the best of both factions. Oh my gosh, what happened there? Was that a gun? Like, for the Prussians or for the... I don't know, but... I'm going to guess that the... Uh, that was a good hit there by the Prussian forces. Take, taking out a unit there. 205, getting it down a little bit. But yeah, I mean, what I was saying is that the, this is the best of the Prussian period. Like, they're actually good at this point. They've had their reforms. And the French are at their heights at this point. This is like the Grand Army at its like, highest point. But you can see here, no one wants to attack Bavaria and his like, entrenchment he's got going on. And I don't blame them. I think Bavaria's got his dragoons kind of wa uh, wasted here. You might want to send them out to go and help the Confederation of the Rhine. Who is rallying. Most of his units have rallied here. These grenadiers are rallying. But I mean, that they broke them once, well, they'll break again probably quite easily. And he's falling back. And I think that's a smart idea. He needs to fall back to... Uh, this is Gardfu's Lair. Oh, that's a good unit. But um, yeah, he wants to fall back to this village. You don't want to really push out. It's for the British to come and get you out. Really. Uh, I can't really see any other reason why not to be in there. And the Swedes just co constantly still firing. I mean, you can just all they're firing up into is up there. It's just a line of I mean, line of shoot. I mean, they're actually they are, it's a, just a war of attrition as this. Or a battle of attrition. Just fighting amongst the graveyards here. Don't even need to bury them. They just leave them here. This is a cemetery in its own. I can hear something going off. Oh, did they just take out... They did just take out the uh, crew there for the cannon. They took out one of them anyway. So this cannon can't actually move off. It's stuck here. But I don't think they were going to move anyway. They're in a good spot. But yeah, this this cannon crew is getting absolutely focused down. They're still desperately trying to take out the uh, Swedish six-pounders. I mean, they're taking out one. Wherever that is gone, but uh, yeah, they're still desperately trying to take out more. And look at this, the Swedes are just paranoid. They've got more and more looking the other way. And they are really full. I mean, the French have got to do something soon. And the Bavarians are going to break here in the center. They're falling back. They are falling back. The French might need to send up some infantry. There's Napoleon's pretty close to the front line, I just realized as well. I don't know why I have the, they have a lot of cavalry back here defending their uh, cannons. You might want to send forward this reserve line infantry. Help the Bavarians out. I can hear some. I can hear trumpets going off. Usually means cavalry's moving. Or infantry of some sort. National Chevaliers. Oh, they could be useful. They could be useful. But it looks like the uh, Bavarians here are going to turn their Jaegers to face the Swedish line infantry. And they're going to try and get a flanking shot. And that would be really good there for them. And the Prussians are still... Still positioning. I don't feel like they've fired many volleys off. They still they seem very pedantic about where they're going to fire. I mean, they just you can see the Swedish out there. The line infantry is not quite set up. But I mean, they need to be careful that they, they don't then get flanked. The British are setting up their horse artillery again. Going to set it. I don't know where though. I mean, they're just making a grand battery here with the Swedes. I think they're going to just bombard this central position of the Bavarians. And the Swedes and the British now are double teaming the Confederation of the Rhine, who's having a really hard time. Glorious from the Swedes. I mean, they barely fought in the war in the Napoleonic Wars. I mean, and they were taken over by uh, Bernadotte, one of the French marshals, and then he changed changed sides and sided with the Allies uh, instead of the French. Much to Napoleon's frustration, but I think he knew it was going to happen. Why he got him out of the way? But they, the Swedes barely take part in the war. They like make a minor appearance at Leipzig, and that's kind of about it. But I mean, here we go. It looks like the uh, looks like. The British are coming forward again. They've got the Saucy Sixth coming forward. They've got the Staffordshire Knots. And the Young Buffs. 
Nin, Skillings are still here. I mean, this is great to see all these. And here we go, cavalry fight going on in the back lines here. We've got some uh, Queen's Light Dragoons fighting it out. And we've got the uh, Royal Irish Dragoons guards also coming in to fight. And we've got gendarmes as well from the Confederation of the Rhine. It's going to be an interesting one. Whoever wins this, you do imagine, is then going to control the cavalry field. The French really should have sent their cavalry in. I know that they're worried of the Prussians and the Swedes, but they might want to just... I actually know the Confederation of the Rhine might... Just have enough here. Yes, I think they have because these British are already pretty beaten up from the fights against the infantry of the Confederation of the Rhine. They just couldn't match up to the cavalry, and there you go. The British rear is now at threat. This is a big, big worry. I think the Swedes and the Prussians have got to send some cavalry across. They've got more than enough here to deal with their own issues with the French, and the Prussians are now pushing forward. What is this? This is some Ullens here as well. They've got plenty of cavalry left. I mean, so do the French, though. And here we go. The French lines are now opening fire. We've got National Guard here. God, there's just there's a lot of National Guard in this army. And here we go. The French are opening fire. The Tricolor flies high at the moment. And you, or they can barely see the Swedish over there, actually. I mean, this is the case, though. I mean, the Battle of Elor in history, I mean, this is obviously just... The map, but like the historical version when the French fought the Russians, they basically were fighting in the middle of a snowstorm. Guns were barely firing, uh, like powder was always dry. Luckily, today the powder is not dry. It is, uh, oh, is is dry, and it's they're able to fire. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of uh, combat going on. And there you go. Looks like the Prussians went for a charge, and the French form square. Luckily, but they're going to go into this one. The Yulans here, and they might route this one. No, 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 they've, they've rallied, they've rallied. Oh, I don't know, it's going to be close. They might get um, routed because of the infantry fire that keeps coming after. That was kind of a waste by those Ullans. They were, they might return, but it's going to be a really weak unit. Already was a fairly weak one. And, uh, I mean, this French unit needs to reform uh, line. But look at this, look at the mass of Prussians now going around the flank. And this is what the French have to worry about. Uh, they're spread out so thinly. But at the same time, right now, the Bavarians, I know they haven't got much in the way of infantry left. Actually, they really don't, do they? Wow. I mean, they've got some back here that they've got. But they really need to push forward. They need to smash through the center. Try and go for these gun emplacements. Um, because the Prussians are now really occupied. And the Swedes, and like the rest of the Swedes, are really occupying themselves here on the French left. Well, on their left, the French right. So, I mean, if they could push through the center here and go for the guns... And they could do a lot of damage. And if they, like, coincided with, like, the uh, French cavalry attacking, I don't know where that's even gone. It's back there. They keep running away. And um, then they could do some really good damage there. Because there's Swedish guns here. There's uh, British guns. I think there was Prussian guns at one point, but I think they've moved on. Oh, right. oh no, they routed, didn't they? Because I think the British might... I don't know, it's going to be close. The British might be able to take the Confederation of the Rhine out here. They look like they're doing a lot of damage. But they've lost their general, and I would have thought that that would, I don't know, I would have thought that that would have inf in impacted their fighting ability. Apparently not. Look at these guys. It's such a beautiful mod. And here we go, got more line infantry just falling back. Confederation of the Rhine is just falling back. Giving up ground. I mean, look at this. Bavarians are now coming out. They are actually coming out. They're not really attacking where I thought they would. Or they should, I think. They should really push a little bit to the center. Because there's a big hole here between these two infantry, like, sections of the Swedes. I mean, the, all the French could push forward here. Like, they need a, they could punch forward and make a hole. Because that's just what you've got to do. Split the army in two, almost. And take them on one at a time. Do a bit of a Napoleon-esque style uh, split in two. Divide your enemies. That's what we tried to do at Waterloo and failed. I mean, it's a huge unit there as well. Lion Infantry, Prince Anton, I presume that is. If they can get around the flank and threaten the British here, that'll be really good. I mean, they've got some Lion Infantry now doing exactly that. And they have cavalry. They could just freely charge into the rear of all this uh, infantry here with the British. They could freely do that. I think that would be a good sacrifice for the cavalry. It's not even a sacrifice necessary. If you take out all the British infantry, that's a 2v... Uh, 3v2 now. And they're routing those uh, Staffordshire units there. Now they're having to face the Inskillings. These guys have been fighting for ages. 
They've literally been fighting since, like, the farmhouse. What's this? We've got some cavalry here coming forward. We've got some Bavarian cavalry sneaking forward. Forgot they have cavalry. And, I mean, they could definitely go for this. They could def This is so easy to take out. I mean, the Swedes are sending stuff over. And here we go. They're going in. The Bavarians are going in. They're going to go in. I mean, it's a poor charge, but it might be enough. They are shaken. They're trying to form a square. Look at that tiny square they're forming, the British. Will it be enough? I don't know. It might be. I think the Bavarians, yeah, look at this. They've had enough. They realize it's not worth it. And they form square to the British. I mean, now is the time to just send an infantry. Shoot these guys while in square. And the Confederation of the Rhine. Yeah, flee because the Dragoons are coming over from Sweden. But this is good because now the French... Where is the French cavalry? Oh, he's come all the way back. It's... Ah. The French cavalry is coming back, I think, because it realizes that its own flank is now very threatened. Look at this. Surrounding the French are in full retreat. As they should be. They are French, after all. But yeah, these units are, like, getting shot constantly. This is a huge... Look at these musketeers getting gunned down. And here's going to come a charge from the Brandenburg Carassias, I think. Yep, they are coming. Oh, God. The Prussians are coming. No. And there they go. They're round before they even hit these uh, Frenchmen. Defend the colours. Defend the colours. And there are the Carassias. They're just... I mean, they've done their job already. They don't want to stay in there too long, I don't think. I mean, they could definitely... They should definitely take out this one. The 88th. Yeah, the 88th. Take out the 88th and then get out of there. These go Actually, these Guard National might be able to easily route as well. This is a weak, a weak defense here. Yeah, look at that. Already could run. And there the Gunners have gone for Bavaria in their, like, entrenchment here as well. Constantly getting battered down. But, yeah, I mean, this is a real issue here. And the French have countered. The French have countered, but the Prussians and the Swedes are forming square. So this is not good. These Chasseurs need to get out of here. And they've routed. The Bay. Oh, but look at that. The, the Karassis are now in. This is a huge Crassier line. I mean, they're forming square. I mean, this one's going to get killed, these reserve musketeers. Look at these Brandenburgs. Yeah, look at this. Fire into the flanks. Kill all these Crassiers. They're like the, the huge fear factor with this unit. Certainly in the British Army, they feared the Crassiers. I mean, they're just gunning down like the first two with like an entire volley. Poor cavalry. But they need to route this unit to the Crassiers and then get out of there like ASAP. This is a good unit to hold on to. It's a huge cavalry unit. Look at that, the French are in full flight. I mean, they've uh, the Guard National here have routed the uh, Carassiers of Brandenburg. And the Bavarians have sent over their cavalry. I think they're, they're going to try a huge cavalry force to try and break them. I mean, I'd re-rally re this unit and then go in for all these guys here. Just stop them in their tracks. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. It looks like Britain has been routed fully, basically, and has been forced back again. Fully out of the village this time. He tried to get back in. Failed. I mean, you can. We'll just have a look at the sheer amount of bodies here. Look at this. This is an entire line of British here, just gunned down. Jeez, this brings a tear to my eye seeing all these British just dead. But uh, this is what war creates. Absolute hell. And it looks like now the right flank is going to be where the main engagement is going on. The French are going to see the most of the action now. The two German factions, I think, are only going to be supporting. Really, I mean. Bavaria's got his uh, Chevalegas over here, but I mean, that's kind of it. The rest of his stuff has been kept. This huge art artillery piece now needs to be, like, focusing down these Prussians. And they need to send forward this uh, tiny unit here. Well, it's not tiny. It's 109 men. Send it forward. They need every single unit here to hold this line. I and mean, these uh, Swiss here. Oh, God, the poor Swiss. Getting focused down. They're not even in their classic red either. But they're just getting... They're getting focused down. They're not even looking the right way. That's a shame. Get them back. Get them back. These men need to be used in line formation. Facing the right way. But yeah, the Swiss and the uh, British are fairly bloodied. I mean, the Swiss... Uh, not the Swiss, the Swedes, sorry. Are fairly bloodied. Um, but they still got a fair amount of men. And there you go. I mean, the Prussians got charged again by this time by the Bavarians. What was that unit called? Thurn und... It's called taxis. I mean... How do taxi you around? But I mean, yeah, you can see this. Look at this. All these uh, musketeers are getting pushed forward. The white, uh, the the black plumes of the Prussians on their helmets or on their hats. Shakos, isn't it? That's what they call a 
pretty sure what they call like that the helmet or the hat of the uh, infantry. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not really sure. They call it a shako. Uh, that could be just part of the helmet or hat or whatever you want to call it. The headwear. Wouldn't really. Wouldn't really class it as a helmet because it's not going to stop a bullet if it goes through. I mean, they've got a. Uh, oh, I thought this was the general here. I don't know if the Confederation of the Rhine actually has any artillery, or if he does, where it's gone. But they're really holding this village hard. Oh yeah, here it is. They've literally replaced the uh, Bavarian artillery. They've come back over here. They're like, right, we're going to take on the uh, Swedish artillery. And we'll do a better job. Let's have a, let's have a volley, men. Let's have a volley. Nope, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, the Bavarians here, credits them. Fighting hard in this tree line. I mean, sh this must be giving them cover. Uh, I'm pres I would have thought so. I mean, I'm pretty sure it gives them cover in like the base game. I wouldn't have thought they got rid of that in the uh, in the mod. But there you go, more men running. Is that um, what is that? Oh, that's Bavaria routing there. I was worried that it might be. Oh, look at that! That's a huge unit as well for Chasseurs. 150. And the French really put money into their cavalry. They need to keep these Krasniers and Chasseurs alive to just deal with these, like, Swedish cavalry. I think they just go for it. I think they send in, they can, like, rally this, uh, Dragoon here. And then possibly get, like, the rest of these Chasseurs over here. They could definitely go for it. And look at this, the Prussians are getting, like, so close that they're getting, like, to the, inf to the artillery back here. This is the, the smaller one. They're, like, getting fired on, like, point blank range. Let's have a volley. The French artillery is like run world renowned at this point and it's getting like fo focused down. The Bavarians need to charge into the flank here. Here they go. Here they go. They're going to charge in. This is what they need to do this. And they're going to try and form square. They're going to form square in time. Yeah, they are. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Now they need to send infantry up. Come and deal with it. But I don't know what they got. Like, they literally got this unit here. This third line. And the cavalry's coming in from this side. They're going to try and form square. Mm, yeah, they kind of did it. Yeah. I don't know. They kind of definitely got in amongst that. that. This unit here certainly is in trouble. Oh my god, they really did route that unit. Jeez, that unit was gone from fresh and lost 100 men. And now they go up in fire. We're going to see the second gun fire, possibly? I don't know. Are they both fired? They may be both fired, but... I mean, you look at this, they're now sending in more chasseurs. Oh, they, they did actually form line. So that's their, that's their mistake. They thought they'd finished. And no, they didn't see these uh, chasseurs in front, but they're getting gunned down. It's only a 32-man unit. Just got a gun down. They're actually really, really close to the front line. <laughs> uh, to the back line now. There's these chesters here. Uh, but, and this is the main guns. They are nearly in. They're getting like constantly like charged here. The French have lost a considerable amount of infantry. Like it is routed fully. I mean they've got units dotted around here. But they need to like get them back. Back into the fight. And they need to put they need to punish the Swedes here. Look at them, they're pushing hard. I mean or, put, or like the Confederation of the Rhine needs to start moving forward. He needs, him and Bavaria need to start taking the fight to what remains of Britain and Sweden over here. So they can then go and support their ally. Because otherwise if they just get, they may just get gunned down by what is of like Prussia here. I mean look at this. The Swedes and the Prussians here just fighting out. You can't even see each other. This is kind of like the snowstorm variant. It's just a load of foliage in the way. And they're still fighting out in the cemetery over here. So many bodies already littered the cemetery. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't fight more hard for the for the village. I know it was kind of a losing fight, but they could have definitely tried a little harder, you wonder. Because if they took retook that farmhouse, they did a lot of damage to the uh, position here of the uh, Confederation of the Rhine and the Bavarians. But yeah, I mean, the French is getting, like, volleyed in the side. This unit here, for instance, just does not like being shot here. The fourth, uh, the fourth line. Just... Gun down, it's just morale is just, yeah, concerned, I think. Casually sustained in battle. And there it goes, it's break. Oh, it's not breaking, it's falling back. And the French are constantly doing this. They're falling back to a different line. But they're also now giving, like, putting the uh, Bavarians in the lurch because the Bavarians are now being abandoned by their French allies and then they can be flanked. And then the artillery piece here of the, uh, the 12 pounder here is now then under threat. But there you go, finally, looks like the Confederation of the Rhine is going to push forward. Maybe a little too late. The Prussians here, again, still 
I mean, they're still threatening the guns here. They're not actually f pushing forward, which may be a mistake in the future. I don't know. I mean, they are shooting. I think they are trying to shoot the crew here. Either that or they're shooting the uh, the Karassis. I don't know. No, they are shooting the crew up there. And they need to uh, send the Karassis in. Try and just send them in. He might not be paying attention. They fired a shot there. I mean, they're trying to route, rally these guys. Or route these guys, sorry, with artillery. Just send in the Dragoons. Send in the Karassis. I know it didn't work the last time, but I mean... This time, surely. They're so close, they cannot form square in time. And they're sending forward some uh, of the Swiss infantry again. This is a real issue. I mean, yeah, now, the, I mean, the Brandenburg, not Brandenburg, uh, Prussia could just push through here, get, go for Napoleon, go for the kill. I mean, they're now trying to pull across some Jaegers, are the uh, Bavarians trying to hold this gap. I mean, they've got a tiny line infantry unit as well that can do the job. But, I mean, they are in real, real trouble. They've got some uh, Chevaleggers here that might need to go in. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close. I mean, look at that. The Swedes are breaking. Here come the uh, Prus uh, Here come the Bavarians. They're going to rout the Prussians here, you imagine. I mean, I say that. They form, squ they look like they form square, apparently. Don't think they did, really. They uh, weren't set up at all. They are going to rout uh, the Bavarians or the force them back. And now the uh, Bavarians have gone into combat, sitting in their line infantry. And they've routed the uh, Prussians on this flank, so that's really good. Now carry on down the line. See if you can carry on down this line. These Brandenburg-like musketeers here, if they form square, they're getting shot to death by these line infantry. And they're already doing that. They're already getting shot to death anyway. They're getting charged in the flank as well by more Bavarians. The Bavarians are just going to go ham, and they're just charging it. And they've routed those Prussians, and they're carrying on down the line. So that's good. The Prussians are being broken over here by the guns of the French. I mean, these Prussians, I think, need to just go up for a charge. And the French are somehow still holding this line. And here we go. The Carassiers are coming back. Pray for these Prussians. They actually are going to form square in time. These poor Carassiers have had no luck. But they've just... The Carassiers don't care. They've just pushed through. Jeez. These, these uh, Prussians, yeah, in for a rough time. They're actually going on. The Krasis went on into this unit here. These reserve musketeers, which I don't think can form square. And uh, it's showing. They are, they are losing this. They are breaking as well. And those Prussians broke. And there you go. The French left has all... Yeah, the, the French right has been saved. And the uh, attack on the left from the Allies is, well, all but over, really. The, the rest of their units are in full retreat. And I'd say now the balance power is... I don't know. I mean, since balance power is not here. I'd say, I'd say it's possibly in favor of the French again. They maybe have just saved enough. They're now making sure these units are routing properly. They are fully routing them. Shooting them with guns, all sorts. But, I mean, here comes the Swedish Cav. If this could be a big win. If this Swedish Cav can, like, push through the cavalry and get into the infantry and then into the guns. They've done a really good job there as well. And then the Bavarians are still carrying on their charge. They've routed some Swedes. But the Swedes and the Prussians are now falling back. I mean, they're, they're trying to send... I mean, look at this Blucher's coming forward. With his uh, Hussars. Well, I presume this is either Blucher or it's... Uh, yeah, I presume this is just a unit. A large general unit. I don't know. Or it could just be named after Blucher. More than likely, it's the latter. I can't see him. I don't know where the Prussian general is. Unless that is him. I'm going to say it is him. I'm going to say that Blucher is the general. I mean, they're shooting their own cavalry here. No. They've got to be careful, though. I'm pretty sure that these uh, these guns probably could hit their own cavalry. This is not, doesn't seem like a big enough angle difference to like miss these Karassias. Which have been through hell. They really have been. And here we go. It looks like the Bavarians and the Confederation of the Rhine is going forward again. And they are out. And what are they going after? Oh, they're going after the general of Sweden. How they caught him out? Surely he would have been further back. And he's going to die. I mean, that's him there, I think, with his uh, glorious hat. And there in comes, uh, well, this looks like some light dragoons of Sweden trying to save the general. And I think they did rout the Confederation of the Rhine. But, I mean, they routed the general. Look at this, the Swedes and the British in full retreat. I don't know where they're going to. Are they going to try and retreat to that town over there? Quite possibly. But they are getting fully routed. 
They really need to like cut off one of these armies. There's like one like arm of this army needs to like cut off either the British and the Swedish, or they need to cut off the Prussians and the Swedes. I think just because of the pursuing of like the Bavarians and the Confederation of the Rhine, they could definitely get the British and the Swedes more more likely. Like the Prussians and the Swedes just aren't being pursued by the French. Bavaria is just about still alive. He still holds his town with quite a few units. Might need to just get them out. I don't think you need these guys in here anymore. Like the Nassau's are still in here. They might need them for the, like the final push to take these guys out. But they, the Bavarians are coming. They are not finished. They have not finished harassing these musketeers. And I think that's. Oh, it says it's a like these guys just like instantly like nearly rout here. But they, I thought they got a good charge off there. They seem to do a lot of damage. I mean, they need to get, like, infantry quickly up to support this cavalry when they charge it in. Like, these Chevalegas now just got went to their deaths, basically. And then they need to really... They could charge in this Dragoon unit. As soon as they stop forming square, charge. Bring up infantry. Force them to rout. But it does look like the Prussians and the uh, Swedish are falling back. So I'm just going to... Fast forward ever so slightly and see where their next line of defense is going to be. I don't know where it will actually be. I mean, they've kind of left the open ground. I mean, maybe they're just trying to lure out the uh, the French and their allies from this nice position that they got. It looks like Bavaria is starting to abandon his buildings that he's been holding on to since the very beginning of this battle. I mean, they still got some cav. They could still possibly do this, the, the Allies, if you're rooting for them. If you want to see the Frenchies beaten. But it's going to take a, a small miracle, I think. They've got to unite their two arms of the army again. And then if it can catch the Confederation of the Rhine out, because he's pushing hard, and a bit of Bavaria, then they could do quite well here. The French need to push hard. They need to start moving up their armies. They've got some artillery as well. One six-pounder left. I can see that unless the British have any, but I don't think they do. No, I think that's it. I think the rest of it just got either abandoned or cut down or whatever. And the, it looks like the uh, British have decided that their defense is going to be somewhere here. And there you go. The engagement is starting again. The Bavarians and the Swedes are opening fire on each other. Just a small little engagement here. See those guys out in the distance. There's a good volley. Oh, a few men dropping down. You can see the musket balls firing off. It looks amazing. And what remains of these light dragoons might be going for a charge. I mean, they just need to open fire. Just gun these guys down. Here they go. They're going to keep... I mean, these guys surely should route. Come on. 11 men, there they go, routing. I mean, they need to push hard here as well. Push hard here on this small, like, on the British here, who are nearly out. They are nearly finished. They have four depleted units. And the French are sending forward their cavalry. It's all they're committing. I mean, actually, here comes the, uh, the infantry. Looks like it's finally going to move up as well. But I think we're coming into the closing stages of this battle, so I hope you guys have enjoyed. hope you guys have survived this long. It's been a long and grueling fight in the snow. But the British are about to break. The Queen's Royal here about to go. Even if it's the... F uh, well, I think they're guards. Well, they're certainly uh, a good unit. The King's Own Foot. The Lions. Ooh, they've got a good name. And then there's like a fourth in the... Uh, and then we've got... What else we got over here? We've got like someone else. The West Kent. And then we've got the Northumberland from Thomas. Picton still. I am very disappointed that the Swedes and the Prussians are going to last longer than, than the British. I mean, as it looks like currently, the British look like they're just going to get outgunned. The Swedes are going to try a, four, uh, a flank here, though, which is really good. The French need to get their infantry up to th just counter flank. And I can hear a gun going off. It looks like it's going to be the Swedish gun. Get it back in position.
Let's, let's wait. Fire! I think they're firing a canister shot. I think they're trying to fire at that, uh, these infantry right in front of them. I don't think they're getting many kills. I think canister seems to stop about here. Seems to be where all the dead bodies are. This Baden unit, that looks awesome as well. Like, they've got, like, Grenadier... Well, maybe they are a Grenadier unit. I don't think they are. They've got, like, Grenadier-esque... Uh, sort of, like... Shackos going on. Look awesome. Keep the volleys up, men! And yeah, the British have been forced back. Well, actually, no, have they? I don't know. They just look like, they look like they're always moving backwards with the British. It's very French-like. I don't like it. And here we go. The cavalry fight to decide the battle, I'm going to say. If the Swedish win this and the Prussians, then I think they uh, can turn it around. This battle around. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's going to be hard to tell. Oh, no. The Swedes are breaking here. This Karasia unit is just too strong. Oh, but they've broken... Something. They broke something. Maybe it's us, oh, the Chasseurs. Yeah, the Karasis here are just so good. They need to get more up here, really. They need to get, like, the Dragoons up here. Oh, they might break these Karasias. And they might break some more Swedes first, though. No, look at this. They just keep rallying. These guys are just confident. Yeah, they're like, yeah, that's fine. We can carry on fighting in here. Don't mind us. And the general's dead. I think that might be Bluka dead. Yeah, I think Bluka's dead. Yeah, he was in that unit. And there you go. They've routed all of the cavalry. This is going to be insane. How have they done this? The Swedes, I mean, they uh, they lost their general in fairness. So they were pretty rough on the old morale. But it looks like, yeah, this Crassier unit here is going to just destroy everything. It's got to be one of the MVPs of this game. Yeah, it's routed the uh, Bluka's like, unit. The Swedes are sending like a tiny unit of infantry trying to deal with it, but they're now free to just charge into the back of any of these units. I mean, if they just carry on, persist with the line, line infantry attacks, then they should also win. I mean, the French here coming up in their big columns. You can see here, this is a huge unit, 186. Let's have a volley, men. Look at these men. These look like elites from the Grand Army. The drummer boy ready. I mean, look at that. They just routed the Prussians here. The Prussians are fully gone, I think, because of their general dying. That is going to be, I think, a French and, well, we'll say French and German allied victory. Because, I mean, the Germans, the German allies did a lot of good work. I mean, the Confederation of the Rhine, basically, with the, uh, like, a bit of Bavaria, did defeat the British. And then they basically then just worn down the Swedes as well, drawn Swedish troops over here. And look at this, Krassi is now... Uh, Oh, Napoleon's in here. It's not even Karasias. It's. I mean, they need to be careful with their artillery. Then Napoleon's in here. Don't want to su uh, just then see Napoleon get gunned down and then... I don't know. The morale just changing hands. But they're just cutting down these units, making sure they're fully retreating. And there you go. The Prussians are in full retreat. So are the British. The Swedes are the only ones left. And they only have three units remaining. One of them being an artillery piece. And they're just going to get around the flank and look. You can see the morale is breaking like instantly. As soon as they get flanked, they're just like, no, this is too scary. Don't like it. I can hear more cavalry or I can hear infantry moving forward. I'm not sure what it is. It could be anything. I think it is the uh, Germans over here. They're moving forward. They're going for a charge and the uh, artillery is just going to break. They're abandoning their gun. And it's just now down to the Swedes. They're holding. And here comes the... Look at this, the Bavarians still. I think these are guard units. These have got to be guard units. After My de my decision is guards. And yeah, these uh, Karasias of the Bavarians still not able to like do any damage here. They're still having the frustration of breaking through. But just fire at them in square. They're going to stay in square. Shoot them. And there you go, breaking. And there you go, the other unit finally breaking. And that is going to be the battle by the looks of it. I think they're just retreating.
And uh, I don't know. And there you go. A victory for the French and German forces. So uh, this was I'm pretty. This was sent in by uh, uh, Marshal uh, Null. So uh, thank you to him. And uh, it was an excellent, excellent battle. Did really well as Bavaria. Unfortunately, he lost a lot of his troops. I think he lost, yeah, he lost the most out of any of his uh, forces. Confederation of the Rhine losing the second most. But the Confederation of the Rhine, he also deployed the least, in fairness. Uh, which I don't know if that's a good thing. But he got the most kills as well. So, I mean, what you take from that, <laughs> what you take from that, I guess. But uh, well done to all of the players, to uh, Marshall Null, Tom, uh, Bob, Scan, uh, Pagan Queef, and T and Crumpets. They did all very, very well. They all fought hard till the very end. So we'll have a look at the uh, unit statistics for Bavaria. I and mean, the most kills on this Grenadier unit here, Von Vincent, Von Vincenti, Vincenti? I don't know how you say that. I butchered that name. But it ranked up like excellent and it got 227 kills. Lost most of its unit, all but four men. And uh, then the next best one was like one of his line infantry units. So it's one of the more elite ones. 135 kills. I do like Bavaria. I've had a look at them and I do like their roster. I think you can get some really good armies uh, together with uh, for a good cost. Or good price. And uh, then, like, the Dragoons, 91, they did okay. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, his Crassies didn't do great. And they were, like, probably pretty expensive, I imagine. But, yeah, I mean, well done to him. And well done to the rest of the players. And I hope you guys enjoyed this Napoleon Total War 3 battle. If you did, please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment. And until the next one, Legionnaires.